Who is like unto thee, O God, among the gods who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? The six men West African time, 17 hours GMT. It's time for church on the waves. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm excited to be back after our series, Winning Virtues. So will you call some, inform some, remind some, alert some, copy the link and share it on all your social media platforms. Let someone know that that life impact, that life transforming, that life changing broadcast titled Church on the Waves is on. It is going to be great today. Hallelujah. There will be impartation of grace today. There will be release of the blessing today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the word of God is quick and powerful. It is sharper than any treasure soul. It pierces through the dividing assault of the soul and the spirit, and of the joint and the marrow. And it's a discerner of the intent of the heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That song by Maverick City, Jireh. God is our Jehovah Jireh, meaning on top of the mountain of the Lord it shall be seen. Whatever is missing in your life, whatever is lacking in your life, I believe God in this new series, it shall be seen, it shall be found. In the mighty name of Jesus, I believe God for restoration. In the name of Jesus, is it time you've lost? Is it years that you have lost? Is it resources that you have lost? Is it relationships that you have lost? Is it blessings, financial, material? Whatever blessing you might have lost, and believing God for double restoration, Jehovah Jireh will prove himself as Jehovah Jireh in your life. In the name of Jesus, it will be more than enough for you. It will be more than sufficient for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Awesome song by Maverick City, Jireh. And it will continue to be your Jireh and my Jireh. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we say a word of prayer as we start church on the waves today? Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. What a joy and privilege to see today. Thank you for your goodness, your loving kindness, and your faithfulness. Thank you for bringing us gloriously to the month of August 2023. We return the glory, the honor, the adoration, and praise to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I release myself to you this hour. Take over my tongue and my lips. Cause me to speak as your oracle and to minister with the ability that you give in the name of Jesus Christ. Let all tongues be given to me and cause everyone to hear me speak in their own language. As that you remember the covenant that you honor your word and cause your name to be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on planet Earth. Welcome to Church on the Waves. We are starting a brand new series today. I want to bless God for that series, Winning Virtues. I want to believe you were mightily blessed. You were mightily blessed. The Bible says we should, with all diligence, add virtue to our faith. And then began to list some of the things to also add to virtue. Brotherly kindness, you know, love, and all those things need to be added to your faith and to your virtue. When you had those things, the Bible says you will never fail, you will never fall, you will never be fruitless. I pray for you from now, you will win always. Remember the scripture says, now thanks be unto God, who causes us to triumph always, not sometimes. He causes us to triumph always in Christ Jesus and makes known through us the server of his knowledge in every place. I believe God for you today. You will be positively impacted in Jesus' name. Amen. A lot of things are taking place all over the world at the moment, especially as regards the economy. A lot of downtime. A lot of things are going south. A lot of things are going down because of the global economy that is failing and falling today. And that is why God laid it upon my heart to start this series. It's supposed to be a short one. Let's see how far the Holy Spirit will lead us. But I take my mind back to the very first broadcast of Church on the Waves many years ago. 
specifically February 14th or February 16th, I'm trying to remember now, 2020, hallelujah, when we started Church on the Waves. The very first message that I shared on this platform, it was during the COVID era, and that message was apt for that time. Little did we know that it is going to be required once again. The Holy Spirit led me to that message. I heard I'm going to listen or to go back to my old notes. I went on a fresh study for this message. I'm sharing with you and I'm starting a series today titled Thriving in Difficult Times. Thriving in Difficult Times. Thriving in Difficult Times. Now our text is going to be from Genesis 26. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The popular passage in Genesis 26 is Genesis chapter 26 from verse 12, when the Bible says, Isaac sowed in that land, and in the same year he reaped the hundredfold. Many of us love to quote that a lot, but I want to take us starting the journey from the very first verse, verse 1. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe God for light from his word. I believe God for deliverance. I believe God for impartation of grace. I believe God for the establishment of the covenant in your life and in my life via this series in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Get your mindset. God is said to do great things. Like I said, the world economy is failing today. For a country like Nigeria, a lot of people are running away. Money is beginning to fail. People's purchasing power is beginning to dwindle. When the subsidy on fuel, that is, you know, petroleum, premium motor spirit, which is called uh, petrol, you know, when the subsidy on it was removed some two months ago, the price of the PMS quadrupled. And that made a lot of prices of many things to go up. You know, we are experiencing now in Nigeria double digit inflation you know the inflation just went to the roof everything just went up food prices and all of that just went up and now the government is trying to salvage the country from experiencing a food crisis coupled with the fact that the farmers are being disturbed from farming by the headsmen and the bandits and the kidnappers and then all the all the terrorists and all of that attacking them destroying their farm produce, you know, destroying their be killing the men, killing the youths, people that are able-bodied and who can farm. And so there's been some form of dwindling in the products being produced, agricultural products being produced in Nigeria in recent times because of all these things. And that is why the government is trying to save the country from a food crisis. Hallelujah. But I believe God for you and I, the Bible says in Proverbs 22, in the book of Job 22, verse 29, the Bible says, When men say there's a casting down, we shall be saying there's a lifting up. Because God will save the humble person. If you were, if you watched our last broadcast of the patterns I shared with you, one of the ajakas of destiny is pride. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, humble yourself under God's hand, everlasting hands. And in due season, we will lift you up. God will save the humble person. Hallelujah. But when men are saying there's a casting down, we shall be saying there's a lifting up. Is it possible to thrive in a time like this? Is it possible to prosper in a time like this? Is it possible to go forward? Remember Genesis 26, verse 12 to 14. Isaac sowed in that same land. And the Bible says in the same year, when everybody was saying there was famine, he reaped the hundredfold, he waxed great, he grew, he went forward and multiplied until the Philistines envied him. He was living in the country called Gerah, but he never experienced what the people were experiencing. Everybody was saying there was famine. Everybody was saying, and the Bible emphasized it, there's no phrase, no clause, no word in the Bible that is just for fun. The Bible emphasized it that he sold in that same land. He sold in that same land. He didn't travel anywhere. He didn't relocate to any country. He didn't jump out to anywhere. He stayed in that same land. And he read the hundredfold. 
when everybody was saying there was a casting down, it was growing, it was waxing great, it was multiplying, and it grew to the point that it became a terror, as it were. It became a fear to the entire nation. The king of the nation needed to come and beg him and say, you are too great, you are too mighty, and you are mightier than us. Please make a promise that you will never fight us. You will never turn against us. You know we've been kind and good to you. <laughs> you were trying to secure an agreement, making sure that Isaac did not attack them. We are talking about a land when everybody was saying there was farming. That was the time somebody was growing and expanding, that the king of the nation had to come and sign a pact with him. They sent him away from the land eventually. You know, they took over his wells and all of that, but the man still grew. The man was still expanding. And the king said, wow, let's go and beg him. Let's go and beg him. And they signed a pact with him. I pray for someone under the sound of my voice. The scripture will come alive in your life this season. In the name of Jesus Christ, when men are saying there's a casting down, you shall be saying there's a lifting up. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Genesis 26 from verse 1. The Bible says, And there was a famine in the land, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. So there was famine in the days of Isaac, as there was famine in the days of Abraham. Famines... You know, economic crisis, global economic meltdown are not strange. They are not new. It has always been. Even from the days of Abraham, the Bible says there was famine in the days of Isaac, as it was similar to the one that was experienced in the days of Abraham. So our covenant fathers, God, remember the Bible says if we are of Christ, then we are Abraham's seed. And yes, according to the promise. Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. If you're of God, then you're Abraham's seed. And you are here like Isaac, according to the promise. So our covenant fathers also experienced famine. But we are going to go through a lot in this Genesis 26. In fact, the first three, four, five verses are so loaded. I hope it's going to take us some time to exhaust everything. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible says there was famine. So famine is not new. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, the Bible says there's no temptation. There's no challenge. There's no situation that will come your way that is not common. It is common to man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One of my fathers in the faith, Bishop David Deleko, taught us this many years ago. He said, whatever your challenge is, one of the ways to come out of it or to overcome is to commonize it. Commonize that challenge. It's not specific to you. It's not special to you. So people like to specialize their challenge. Oh, my hypertension. Oh, my cancer. Oh, my kidney failure. Oh, my whatever it is. Stop personalizing it. Commonize it. The Bible says in 4 Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, there's no challenge. There's no temptation that will come to any man that is not common. Hallelujah. That's the first thing. Know that it is common. You know, Job said, there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new that has not happened before. Nothing that will happen tomorrow that has not happened before. Yorubas of southwestern Nigeria have a saying that when you tell somebody, I've never seen this kind before, you are just trying to scare the person. There's no challenge. There's no situation. There's no scenario. That has never happened before. It has happened even in the scriptures. The Bible says there was famine in the days of Isaac. It was economic meltdown. It was food crisis. It was economic crisis, global economic crisis in the days of Isaac as it was in the days of Abraham. So I want you to know that challenge is not unique to you. Don't let the devil, don't let the devil, don't make the devil make you specialize that challenge. Or begin to think, oh, God has failed me. Oh, why me? <laughs> it is common. When you hear other people's stories, then you know that what God has even allowed to come your way is small or tiny compared to what someone else is going through. So, commonize that problem. The Bible says, and God is faithful. So, the second thing is, God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. 
The Bible says, let all men be liars and God be true. God will always remain true. You know, I learned something from the life of Jesus Christ because it is impossible for God to lie. Even if God made a statement, a mistake by calling something and saying, when Jesus told them, cast the net to the right side. <laughs> Isn't that the fishes were already gathered at the right side? It might be that there was no fish there. But the moment the living word told Peter, after he had told all night, and told him, cast your net to the right side, he cannot be found to be a liar. God cannot be found to be a liar. Peter couldn't have cast his net there and catch nothing. No, it's not possible. God, it is impossible for God to lie. So the moment Jesus said, cast your net, if you had said cast it to the left, you would have caught the same net-breaking catch. Jesus said, cast, cast your net to the right side. Once he said that, all the fishes, even if they were not existing, they were created immediately and they were all in abundance on that right side. That is how mighty the God we serve is. Isn't it awesome to have a God like that? The God that can never lie. Even if he makes a mistake by making a statement, that statement, there's a force and a power that will go into existence to create whatever he has declared because he cannot lie. Numbers 23, 29. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. As he said something, and shall he not do it? As he spoke, and shall he not make it good? So realize that challenge is common. Number one. Number two, God is faithful. In that he will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able to bear. So that challenge is your size. That battle is for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Remember, no test, no testimonies. If there was no Goliath, we wouldn't know about David today. And even till now, people make reference to it when a small team is about to play a big team, whether in football or any other game, then you see them saying it's a story of David versus Goliath. Even somebody who has never read the Bible before knows the story of David and Goliath. But on that particular day, in 1 Samuel 17, I'm sure it wasn't funny. For the children of Israel, they were afraid. 40 days, Goliath had been coming to terrorize them. Nobody could reply him until David appeared on the scene. If there's no battle, if there's no test, there will be no testimony to share. So know that God is faithful. For him to have allowed that challenge to come your way, for him to have allowed such a time as this, all over the world, global economy is failing all over the world. The price of fuel and energy is rising all over the world. In the UK, in the US, everywhere. People are paying more. For God to have allowed such a time as this is because he knows it's your size. That challenge is your size. God knows that you are more than able to overcome it. God is faithful. In that he will not allow you and I to be tempted above that which we are able to bear. And then the last thing, which is the fourth thing, is that in every of those challenges, you will still provide a way of escape. He will still provide a way of escape. Hallelujah. So there was famine in the days of Isaac as it was in the days of Abraham. It is not new. It is not news. It is common. God is faithful. He will now allow you to be tested about that which I to bear. And even in the midst of that temptation, it will still provide a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So recognize there is a way out. No matter the challenges you are going through, maybe you are experiencing hard times because of the global economy, you know, our purchasing powers as it were, the world's purchasing power, not mine anyway, because I operate under the covenant. The people's purchasing power is going down. You know, when the price of things have quadrupled, then suddenly you find out that your salary is not enough anymore or the, 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 the income you are making is probably not enough anymore because everything more or less has a, at least probably doubled in price or in cost. So you find that the people's purchasing power as it were is going down. But the Bible says God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tested about that which you are able to bear. And in the midst of it, He will provide the way of escape. So there's always a way out. No matter the challenge, no matter the situation, there's always a way out. And that is why God has ordained this series as the way out to thrive in difficult times. How do I thrive? How do I succeed? 
How do I flourish? How do I prosper even in difficult times? Remember Psalm 37 verse 19? They shall not be ashamed in the evil times. You will not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. In the evil times, the Bible says in the midst of famine, they shall be satisfied. I want you to claim that word and personalize it right now. Say, I, Oluwa Bebega Droja, you put your name there. I will not be ashamed in the evil time. I will not be ashamed in this evil time. And even in the midst of famine, my God will provide a way of escape. In the name of Jesus Christ. And even in the times of famine, I will be satisfied. I will be satisfied. He said, my people shall eat and be satisfied. And my people shall never be ashamed. That will be your testimony and my testimony. We will eat and be satisfied. Even in this time of famine, as it were globally. And then we will be satisfied. And we will never be ashamed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So difficult times are common. Difficult times are common. It has happened before. It might likely happen again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus says something in John chapter 16, verse 33. He said, These things are spoken to you. You know how our God is, a, is an intentional God. Nothing meets him by surprise. Nothing meets him by mistake. Jesus said to his disciples, These things have I spoken to you. I'm telling you these things now. That in me you may have peace. Because in the world, he didn't say you may. Jesus said, in the world, you shall, meaning it will surely come. Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. In the world out there, you shall have tribulations. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. Whatever comes your way, I've already overcome it before I allowed it to come your way. That is why I said, God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tested above that which you are able to bear. And in the midst of every temptation, He will still provide a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. I want you to talk to God in prayer right now. I just say, Lord, I know you are faithful. I know whatever challenges is pressing me right now, I know there is a way out. Lord, in this season and in this series, open my eyes to see the way out in the mighty name of jesus christ open my eyes to see the way of escape open my eyes to see the way out lord whatever you have for me in this series may i not miss it in the mighty name of jesus thank you mighty god in jesus name amen console comfort and strengthen your spirit by that scripture john 16 33 these things are spoken unto you that in me, no matter what time it is in the world, was so far you remain in me and you are in me. Jesus said, in me, you will have peace. I speak into your life perfect peace in the mighty name of Jesus. No matter the storm raging, remember there was a storm. Water was already filling the boat. The disciples went to wake him up. Master, don't you care that we perish? He said, how long will I have to be with you? I thought you should have understood. Once you are in me, or once you are on my side, or once you are with me, and I am in you, nothing can trouble you. He said, how long will I have to stay with you? The Bible says he faced the storm, and they decreed, peace, be still. I love that scripture. The Bible says there was a great calm. Initially, there was a great wind and a great storm. And Jesus spoke, and there was a great calm. I speak into every area of your life, perfect peace. I command every financial storm, every economic storm, every career storm, every marital storm, every health storm, every storm in your life. I command peace be still in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There shall be a great calm. For every great storm, there shall be a great calm. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As I begin to round up today, hallelujah. Remember Isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2. God was telling them, was telling the children of Israel, you are my own. I bought you with a price. Then he said, when you pass through the waters, hallelujah. When you pass through the waters, he said, I will be with you. 
He said, when you pass through the rivers, it will not overflow you. He said, when you walk through the fire, it will not burn you. And the flame will not kindle upon you. Why? Because I am with you. Remember, 2023 is our year of the wonders of his presence. One of the wonders of his presence is that when God is with you, no matter the storm, the flood, the waters, and the fire burning around you, burning the people of the world around you, you will be exempted. You will be preserved. He said, Isaiah 43 verse 2 specifically, he said when you pass through the rivers, it will not drown you. When you pass through the rivers, it will not overflow you. When you pass through the waters, I will be there with you. When you pass through the rivers, and note it is a matter of when. He didn't say if, it is a matter of when. You will pass through, there will be a time. It will be as if you are passing through the waters. It will be as if you are passing through the rivers. It will be as if you are walking literally through fire. It's as if your entire life has been set on fire. Your career on fire. Your finances on fire. Your health on fire. Jesus said, when you pass through the waters and when you pass through the rivers, it will not overflow you. He said, when you walk through the fire, it will not burn you and the flames shall not kill you upon you to destroy you. I decree today, no matter the waters of life that are sinking others, no matter the rivers of life that are flooding the lives of others with negativities, with losses, no matter the fire of life that is burning others, because this is our year of the wonders of His presence, because God is with you, you will not feel it. The waters of life will not overflow you. In the name of Jesus, the fire of life will not burn you. The flame of life will not kindle upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I feel somebody should personalize it. I think when you personalize it, it becomes stronger and you get more committed to it in the place of prayer. Can you just declare that word? Because 2023 is my year of the wonders of his presence. When I pass through the waters, God God is going to be there with me. When I pass through the rivers, it will not overflow me. The rivers of life will not overflow me. When I walk through the fire of life, it will not burn me. Neither shall the flame of life came do upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be for you and I. In the name of Jesus Christ. So be rest assured. It seems as if we're in a time of famine right now. Everybody is feeling it. Middle class. In fact, somebody said there's no middle class anymore. He's either the lower class or the higher class now. From higher class to lower class, everybody is feeling the heat. Remember, these things have been predicted. Malachi chapter 4, the Bible says, The time coming in those days, the heart will burn like the heat of the oven. But the Bible says, To them who believe in his name, you and I, the son of righteousness will arise with healings in his wings. I decree in the name of Jesus. As for you and as for me, we shall be divinely exempted from the fire burning the world right now. From the rivers and floods flooding the world right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because God is with us, the flames of life will not kindle upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I love that scripture so much. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, it will not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, it will not burn you. And the flame will not kindle upon you. That is the scripture. That is the word of the Lord. God is committed to his word. That is what we choose to believe. And that is what we are going to experience. In the mighty name of Jesus, our finances, our welfare, our resources, our income, our blessings are divinely preserved. We will not experience the heat the world is going through. The sun of righteousness will arise upon our lives, our destiny, our careers with healings in his wings. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I feel like continuing my run and continuing my run out of time today. Someone is out there. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is where the relationship starts from. You need to acknowledge him as Lord and Savior so that you can enjoy these divine provisions for such a time as this. This is the time, <laughs> dangerous time to be without God or not to know God or not to have God. I want you to say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I've heard today that there are provisions for anyone who believes in you to be exempted from what is going on globally right now, especially the negatives. Lord Jesus, I come to you today just as I am. Please forgive my sins and wash me clean with your blood. From today, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations, you have escaped. You have escaped. Welcome to the family of God. Now you will enjoy power, riches, wisdom, glory, honor, strength, and blessings. Those are the sevenfold blessings retained and contained in the package called salvation. What is the land that was slain? Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, to receive power, riches, wisdom, glory, honor, strength, and blessings. These things will speak in your life from now. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to appreciate everyone that joined this broadcast today. I believe you'll be mightily blessed. Don't miss this series. Remember, God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tested about that which you're able to bear. In the midst of the times like this, God will provide a way of escape. That is why I have laid it upon my heart to go through this series again. I have at least 10 things to share. I've only shared one of them today. So you can imagine how this series is going to be. Amazing revelations, amazing discoveries that will bring about your recoveries. In the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord will not fall to the ground in your life. You and I will be living testimony of the positive transformational power of the word of God. Exemption, divine exemptions available by the word of God and the reality of the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Join me on Friday for the patterns. And then I say happy birthday to myself. My birthday is just two days from now. I covet your prayers. You know, send me your prayers, send me your best wishes. And I believe God will bless you mightily in return. Have I been a blessing to you? Have I been a blessing to your life? You can share your testimonies also with me. Maybe your testimonies you've gotten from Word on the Go or Church on the Waves, all the patterns. You can share them with me so that we can thank God together. I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. Cause His face to shine upon you. Perfect all that concerns you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Always remember, I love you so much. See you next time. God bless you. Bye.